You're listening to the Nerd to Know Media Network. Join us at nerdtoknowmedia.com. And welcome to this week's edition of The Game Corner. As always, I am Keanu Calicone, and today we are joined by our special guest. Introduce yourself, please. It's Kev! Yes, it's Kev! Kev. Back, everybody! He's back for a second round. After having gone through pretty much all the games you enjoy except Three Houses, it seemed right to do a Three Houses <laughs> special episode. But before we get into that, how is your week going, Kev? It's going fine. It's it's going fine. I mentioned on the uh, on on the on the radio show that like you know it's 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 a busy period for the for the for the book industry right now. But we're not we're not focusing on that because this is games. <laughs> and as far as games go, I have had in a wonderful time with the Switch playing uh, Carry On, which is a reverse uh, horror game where you play as a uh, a bioma a, a, a cannibalistic biomass <laughs> escaping a lab. It's so much fun. And I also started playing a, a, a cyberpunk bartending visual novel called Valhalla. <laughs> That's real chill. <laughs> That's not, yeah, the Switch has been doing really well for downloads. I've been discovering all these hidden gems. We've talked about it before, like, you know, kind of um, the Goose game is getting its two player Cuphead. Oh, That's up there That's now. Th- my, my highest anticipated release of 2020 <laughs> is that Goose game two player. Absolutely. Oh. It's uh, so, yeah, no, it's, as, yeah. as far as indie darlings go, the Switch is a go-to just because, like, there's something nice about literally just lying in bed playing a, lying in bed playing a real cozy indie game. Yeah. Speaking of indie games, actually, I discovered that a bizarre game I'd actually forgotten about, called a horror game called Catherine. Did you ever hear of this one? Oh, they did just release Catherine on the Switch. Yes. Yes, that's up there now. I'd completely forgotten that now. Uh, I jumped in. Which fun fact? I don't know if you know this. That was developed by the same team as Persona. Really? Yeah. Catherine was made uh, after Persona Four to test the new. I think they're. I think it's Unreal Engine. Anyway, the new game engine yeah. that they were going to develop P Five in. Uh, so they basically just made this weird psychosexual puzzle game. <laughs> Okay. Now you've so- well, you've sold me on Persona now because I love that game to bits. I can't even remember what console I played it on, but it's fantastic. But the other thing I wanted to mention was they've just announced today that they're doing a bundle of Mario games for the Switch, including I've- Super Mario 3D, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy this month, which I'm very I, excited I, about. I already pre-ordered. Did you really? hear, though, the, the, the sticking point with this, though? Hmm? Uh, the, con- the controversy. Hmm. It's only, it's only, it's a limited release. What do you mean? They are, as in, they are only releasing this game to buy from the 18th this month until the end of March, at which point you cannot buy it anymore. Physical or digital, it will not be on store shelves. That is peculiar. So is it just going to be a digital or will it be going to the shops No, no, it's, well, it's, 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 it's both physical and digital. Uh, okay. I, I've pre-ordered the physical edition myself. Okay. But uh, no, like that's, it's just a, li- a whole wholesale limited release. So, man, get in there fast if you want to, because this is going to be one of these things where I think a few years down the line, it's going to be a sheer collector's edition. <laughs> All right. Like Nintendo, definitely... Nintendo are strange about this sort of pres- uh, preservation stuff. I don't know what their deal is. Mm. Yeah, I must say, it's uh, the one knock against the Switch is I find it very hard to track down physical copies of games. And even like kind of like Final Fantasy X and X2 and Bayonetta and Bayonetta 2. They release bundles of the two, but it doesn't work second hand. Like it's a very weird setup. Like, yeah, I think that they're really kind of focusing on a, a digital system, just kind of I think for the portability of it. Yeah, uh, which is even why, like you know, they're trying to push the uh, the Switch Lite, which just doesn't even have the console. Like the 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 not the console, the uh, the the home port, the TV port. That's yeah, what. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's not really a Switch if it doesn't switch. You know. Well, yeah. <laughs> But in any case, on to happier things. I have been very excited to talk about Fire Emblem Three Houses. Uh, so tell me, what, tell you what, why don't you tell us what Fire Emblem is 
in general for people who haven't heard of it, if they still exist? Okay, so in broad speaking terms, Fire Emblem is a series of uh, tactical grid-based RPG systems uh, of various of uh, various different mechanics depending on game to game. Like that's kind of its its broadest speaking. It's a JRPG with a grid-based tactical system, uh, a la Final Fantasy Tactics. Right. Uh, but it all like always kind of having a being set in like kind of a high fantasy section, uh, high fantasy universe, high very high concept, uh, with a lot of kind of militaristic religious plots. Like broadly speaking. Okay, that's a pretty apt description because my only experience was playing the Game Boy Advance games way, way back in the early 2000s. And like, they've seemed to have mostly kept to the same formula. Three Houses is certainly the biggest division from that formula. Mm. But what's your, prior to this, what was your experience with Fire Emblem? Here's the funny thing about my, 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 funny, my, uh, my prior experience to Fire Emblem. I'd never heard of it. Up until a couple of years ago, because it like, up until about Awakening, it was completely niche. Like, mm. but uh, I only really came across it because uh, my girlfriend loves it, adores the series. Mm. Uh, Louise can't get enough of it, uh, and obviously, you know, across our relationship, she has tried to try to get me to play it. She she gave me Awakening, which is like a real big fan favorite. And, yeah. You know, I gave it a handle. Here's the kicker, though, I am. Garbage at tactical RPGs. Oh yeah, I'm, trash. I'm surprised I am to hear that. Terrible. No man, I I I I have no sense of foresight. I'm terrible <laughs> at it. So like, I bombed hard on Awakening and just yeah. could not get. I I think I failed the third mission like three times, and this is like, even on easy mode where permadeath turned off. I just yeah. got sick of it and just turned it off and just didn't want to play a Fire Emblem game again. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's my experience with Fire Emblem before the has it. <laughs> we talk about this kind of off the air in the shop a bit, but see, I'm not good at these kind of RPG kind of strategy things either, but I'm just a glutton for punishment, and those Game Boy Advance games was always permadeath. So, like, you just had to kind of keep hitting your head off the wall until you eventually got through it, and it felt really satisfying when you yeah, got it's... to the next bit, like, you know? In the most cliche way of putting it, they're the Dark Souls of tactical based RPGs. Yes, they very you can, much you can, are. You can cancel me now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say to Three Houses because, like, I went from that to straight to Three Houses, apart from Warriors, which is kind of its own thing. And the gentleness of it by comparison just feels like a warm bath. Oh, yeah. Oh, this game. <laughs> Like, because on top of that, like, the reason I kind of got into Three Houses was because everyone was talking about it. Like, this, mm. for a Fire Emblem game, this game just got so much exposure. And, mm. uh, like, this thing was so heavily advertised as, like, a first-party must-have Switch uh, game. Like, this yeah. this was, like, this was a tentpole Switch release. Which was odd, considering how niche Fire Emblem kind of always has been, as far as the 3DS game goes. Mm. Um, so eventually, like, between like you know kind of just mass media talking about it and be like this game is really really cool and louise obviously she got it and she loved it and yada yada yeah. <laughs> and it was actually it was her selling point of it of it's fire emblem if they added a persona game to it <laughs> okay and i was like okay okay you've got my you've, you've piqued my interest um and yeah no just it's so accommodating like i think that's that's the way to kind of put it is like i Bottom line, this is a fantastic introduction game to Fire Emblem. If you've never heard of the franchise before and you want to give it a go, Three Houses is absolutely the entry point. Yeah, it's actually, the Switch has been very good to Fire Emblem in general because I picked up Warriors, Fire Emblem Warriors now, secondhand, mm. not knowing what it was. And that pretty much, even though it's not a strategy-based game, that catches you up on all the Fire Emblem games from like the past 10 years. So couple that with three houses, you get a pretty good crash course on what Fire Emblem is and who they all are. And they're not even like a Star Wars E type one follows the other series. But oh, like, it's, it's anthology, the, like each yeah, yeah. Each uh, as far as I know, each entry pretty much takes place individually of each other with just little nods to the other games, but they're all like separate universes or something like that. Yeah, the only connective tissue is that there is something called a Fire Emblem, and the Fire Emblem isn't even the same in every game. Hmm. So, like, it's, it is just a broad 
concept with her, and the things that stay the same are like the mechanics and the jobs and all that kind of stuff. As an introduction for Fire Emblem, apart from your horrible awakening experience, how did you find it? Uh, three houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic! So like, so much fun. That's and uh, uh, just I'm 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 struggling to even kind of get where to start with it because like there's just so much in that game that just kind of takes you and like what uh, aside from the fact that like it walks you through the mechanics it simplifies the mechanics from previous games mm. and then even just kind of like the the minute by minute gameplay like in and out of combat was just enjoyable and all um just wrapped in the 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 easeabil- the easeability of playing it on the switch <laughs> just made for a game I literally just couldn't put down. Um, yes, that's very true. Like, I mean, it's just, I think, I can't remember. Maybe it was Jim Serling. Someone broke down the hours that have been put into each Switch game, like via their Nintendo accounts and things. And Fire Emblem was like up there. It is probably the most bingeable game I've played in the last <laughs> two or three years. Can can I, can can we get us deep behind the curtain and um, find out what your uh, what your total is right now? <laughs> I probably could actually. Uh, let me go find my switch, and okay. I'll see if uh, I can. If not, I'll put it in the description of the video. But uh, it's certainly plus a hundred, hundred eighty hours, something like that. Yeah, my my final clock was about one hundred ninety five. <laughs> <laughs> um, now all of that wrapped up in the fact that it, like all that kind of sold the other fact that it has three distinct campaigns. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, let's back up a bit. For yeah. those who don't know what Three Houses is in particular, what's the story and what's kind of the hook of the game? So in Fire Emblem Three Houses, you end up becoming a tutor in a military college. Mm. Uh, and at the very start of the game, you are tasked with running one of three student houses, Hogwarts style. <laughs> um, where you know you spend a little time getting to know all the characters. Who will be part of your fight? Who are part of your combat party and part of you know your RPG party? Uh, and then you choose one, and then each house has their own distinct plot, where various different things will happen depending on which party you choose. Yeah, um, that, that's a pretty that's a pretty apt description for a very complicated thing. And you know, as per RPG rules, you start off in a school and then you go on to kill God. <laughs> <laughs> But which god? That's the question. That's the question. Uh, that's your decision. <laughs> um, I've just checked. A hundred. I've played 133 hours so far. But and I was going to bring this up later. Tragically, I've only done two of the four endings so far. So that's still that double you, that up. Still, that's still like a lot. You've still got some time to go. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I suppose with that, then will we will we get into Probably the the biggest selling point of this game in in its in its characters in the three the titular three houses. Yes, and before we get into that, it seems I found this game to be quite overwhelming at first because it should be stressed that you've got your main three characters run the houses, you've got all the teachers, and then each house has eight students. And the first oh, time you play a... it, it does feel a bit overwhelming because you're just kind of trying to catch up with everything, you know. Oh, there's a truly innumerous amount of uh, of, of characters in this game. <laughs> but I, I, I think I'm just, like, having played kind of a lot of JRPGs in the past, I'm just kind of used to that. Uh, okay. But even by, like, a, even by a lot of, like, Final Fantasy standards, this is a lot of characters. That's why, like, I think your first playthrough definitely should just stick with the guys in your in the house you choose, because mm. obviously you can you can recruit everyone as the game goes on, depending on you know support missions, which we can touch on, I suppose, later. <laughs> um, but like, I, I you know, pro gamer tip number one: put the stamp in there. Uh, just you know, stick to the guys in your house that you pick first. I couldn't do that. I've, I'm on my third playthrough, and I keep recruiting like 20 odd people into my house so they'll be safe from the plot and now i have to mine them all it's like i feel like a farmer it's ridiculous it's just it's just yeah i yeah okay (laughs) so i suppose it's it's time to kind of okay how about we break down uh the break down the three houses that's uh that seems like a good place to start yeah because when the game starts even before you're kind of set up in the school and stuff you are asked to pick one of the three houses and 
it's fair to say that each of the three house leaders has a very distinct personality to the others, like. Yes. Uh, so each of these three, it being a military academy, each of these three are descended from royalty of the very of the three different regions of the world of the of the game. Uh, so you are given. Good lord, I am genuinely drawing a blank on <laughs> any names. Like I, I literally, I had it prepped. It was. That's in my all right. Head, I tell you what, I will. On. I will give you their names first. So you've got a uh, golden deer who led by a guy named Claude, who I would fairly I, I say is kind of the Claude. most... It was the other... Yeah, he's kind of the most affable of them. Yeah, like, Claude's, yeah. Claude's the, the witty smart Alec, and yeah, yeah, yeah. within two minutes of meeting him, I knew I was going to love him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then you're given Dimitri, who is the, the very polite and regal uh, prince yeah. of, the ki- of, a, of a kingdom. So very, very regal, very polite, very, very straight-laced. Yeah, for lack of a better word, a very stock Fire Emblem character. Compared to the others, good, at least. Good sword boy. <laughs> yes, good sword boy with manners and slightly awkward. Uh, and then third is Edelgard, who is the, uh, the heir and empress to uh, the ruling empire of the Sith. Yes, who and that's, is another? Yeah, you who? Can't say. I, like at one aspect, kind of is similar to Dimitri. When you first meet them, as just oh, they're just we got these two straight laced royals. But what about this one guy with a cape? <laughs> <laughs> so like it is, you can kind of I I found it. It was very like okay, I don't. I feel like the game's pushing me to choose one person. I get that these two are pretty, but he's already made me laugh. <laughs> Yeah, it's and it's worth even beyond that kind of because you can tell there's a bit of like competitiveness between the for lack of better terms, the red and blue houses. Already yeah. you're being told that one is going to inherit a kingdom, one is going to inherit an empire, and one is going to inherit what is essentially a bundle of democratic smaller countries. So you're being set up to sort of shape the future of this nation in some way or another. Oh yeah. Oh, for for sure. Yeah. Like you, you. But if you're walking into an RPG and thinking you're not going to start like reshaping the foundation of the world around it, like what are you? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's suppose that's fair. And tell me something. I'm assuming you went with uh, Claude in the Yellow House first. What was your first? See, here's the thing. Of, yeah. Oh? I did not. <laughs> oh, okay. Knowing knowing I would start playing this game a lot, I actually decided to leave Claude till last. Because okay. I knew I'd enjoy him. I I saved I saved him like the dessert at the end of a meal. <laughs> <laughs> well, then that's, so, that must speak to our personalities. Because I left poor, very straight laced traditional uh, Dimitri till last, hoping I'd have kind of like, all right, I'll be invested by the time he comes along, you know. Well, no, like I, I, not to say again, not to say that they're bad characters. Like yes, they're they're yes. all incredible characters in this game. Mm. Uh, Although I will admit, uh, the Blue Lion House did get stacked with a bunch of duds. Oh yeah, like how so? Just comparatively, like they're very kind of like one note, and they're fine. Again, Cl- uh, Dimitri is absolutely the best character in that house, uh, as the straight laced royal that just gets weird and dark later on. Which I we we might get into. I don't know. Uh, let's. I'm actually looking at a at a at a, at a roster here because you got to do who is a very sweet boy. He loves his garden, but he also loves Dimitri more, and that's commitment issues. Uh, <laughs> there's Felix. Who listen? I get it. You're right, but you don't need to be a jerk about the fact that you're right about everything. Yeah, I think um, to be honest, we we Felix suffers from not having the benefit of visuals. He's got like straight black hair. These kind of darty yellow eyes. Kind of a bit opportunistic, you know, that kind of See, thing. See, it's... Like, he's absolutely villain fodder, but uh, if anything, the surprise is he's not a villain. <laughs> yeah, it's... We should say, like, you know, in case all this information is overwhelming, this game is geared for replaying. You are, oh, yeah. like, you're supposed to go in, pick your house, realize that whoever you didn't pick was the villain all along, and then you're going to come back to it and say oh, how could I go to this house knowing what they're going to become? And then you're going to play it and you realize they're not that bad. And you just keep repeating that experience. 
until you're thoroughly emotionally confused. Like, as good as the plot is in this game, my one major criticism is playing both uh, the Blue Lion and the uh, the, the Black Eagle household Mm -hmm. is that they definitely... it, they're going to talk broadly of plot points as they go on. These yeah. two houses clash and are antagonistic to each other. Um, but, you know, neither are good in the grand scheme of things. And both definitely, they try to, like, the game tries to both sides it. Mm. And sure, Dimitri definitely commits war crimes in torturing someone. Edelgard is a fascist dictator. And it's hard to both sides it when that's on the cards. <laughs> Well, I mean, the kind of the game has kind of a get a jail free card because some some evil god or another will happen to turn up on the side you didn't pick, or like that's, it's worth. That's it's the other thing, though, yeah, is that like you have these two plots where you know you know you're trying to pick yeah. each side of the coin, you're trying to see both sides of the battle. When there's a third option where it's like, hey, what if we go beat up this thousand year old dude? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay. That kind of takes the winds out of that sails a little bit. Well, that's just forget it. About, because... Forget about that diplomatic uh, conflict over there. Here's this guy that fell out of the sky. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 worth mentioning that you're not just in a school. The school is the head of a very strict religion. So, like, you know, it's... Oh, yeah, there's, you, there's, you there's, there's overtones a, yeah, of... Yeah. There's overtones of, of religious zealotry, which is kind of the, the core foundation of the motivations for the, the Blue Lions here. So they're yeah. very uh, invested in, in the religion, in the, the religious plot of it, uh, which is actually kind of... Which is the motivation for why the... Uh, again, like, the, the, the Black Eagles kind of wants to take power. They want to take take power away from away from the the the, the religious uh, mm. the religious elite which again is a valid enough point to make but you don't have to do it by being dragon hitler <laughs> <laughs> but like the church is led by an actual dragon <laughs> spoiler okay you, 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 maybe you got me there maybe you got <laughs> it's me. it's yeah it's it's the the weird thing conclusion you kind of come to at the end is that None of these three are perfect. Apart, I'm still Team Claude because oh, yeah, he, no, no, he, no. he at it's least very... tries to be impartial in every single degree. Like it, it very much is like it's all shades of grey except for Claude, who's just yeah. kind of a good guy. <laughs> yeah, actually, this is going to be a nice segue into the. I, I, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself in terms of the gameplay, but there's also DLC that gives you a fourth house of sorts. What's been your experience with this? I really liked it. I like it's it's essentially just a, a short campaign of various different of, der- of various extra difficult levels mm. that then introduce a kind of side character like a fourth house technically but just a lot of kind of uh, additional characters to add to your roster. And my experience very very good. The uh, the like Having played it after I finished at least like my first campaign, mm. the levels added a challenge that absolutely just blew me away. Just like things of having, you know, having this grid-based combat system turn into a chase sequence, mm. having to, you know, ha- having it become almost a puzzle in some senses. Uh, I think like if you're looking for more challenge out of the game, I think that this is an absolute must. And the, you know, the characters are that they introduce are still again really really fun uh they 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 they're like it's a whole roster of very very good characters and here's just four more of them yeah it's actually because i had a different experience for you because i came to three houses late and i Mm. got the dlc pretty much after my first play around and having these characters that aren't staff or in a particular house especially yuri in particular who's Mm. kind of a shady assassin type for Star Trek fans, kind of a Garrick type, having him comment on the action gives you this sense that the game developers are aware of the sort of fact that none of the houses are perfect and you're kind of buying into a hypocrisy no matter which way you go. Like, Oh, yeah. Oh, there's like one of the, char- like one of the characters is quite clearly geared towards you joining the Black Eagles so that she can reclaim her lost countess title yeah and then like it's just any other route you take she's like no i didn't want that title anyway i'm just gonna overthrow them that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and then again one of them is just a straight-up atheist it's like no screw god 
<laughs> no, I don't want to work with this church. Screw them. <laughs> they run experiments on me. <laughs> Heck to a bunch of that. <laughs> well, let's let's get into what it's like to actually play the game. We talked about the battle system, but it's fair to say battling is not even thirty no, percent is, of what you do split, in the game. It it is split down the middle between a a you know your standard fire emblem tactical RPG and a monastery life sim, for lack of a better way of putting it. And this is this is where look, my, my girlfriend Louise t- uh, sold me on the persona aspect because it is very similar to the to the uh, the the day to day life sim aspects of Persona Five, where you are just given a where you're just kind of given an open an open area just to spend time in and interact with characters, and just kind of run a couple of little side quests. Mm. And there's something th- there's something very kind of a uh, therapeutic in it, I think. Oh yeah, how so? Just, I don't know, like, it was between, you know, having to, between these, like, four-dimensional mind chess battles of having to, like, you know, kind of consider ten steps ahead and how am I going to do this? And it's just kind of nice to have that, to have that downtime where you can just wander around the monastery and go talk to your faves and go find all their lost stuff because they can't put things in a goddamn box. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, a fair whack of this game is just picking up seeds and lost wallets and keys. Just, yeah, picking up... Picking up various just items and trying to guess who who dropped it. And some of them, Ferdinand, I'm calling out, like, you know, gets very huffy if you offer him something that doesn't actually belong to him. That's the other aspect, actually, as well, because you can also, aside from giving them their stuff, which they lost because they're all stupid, uh, you could also just give them gifts, yeah. which brings us to a very high selling point for this game, which is the support system. Which essentially just takes this, 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 you know, intricately woven J- battle JRPG and just turns it into a dating simulator. Yeah, let's actually walk that back a bit because for as long as Fire Emblem has been around, there's been this system where if your characters are like near each other and, sp- and fight alongside each other, they will unlock conversations, which can be mm. funny or sometimes reveal important plot stuff. And we'll give you like this little bonus thing at the end saying, ah, such and such, we're friends forever, or fell in love, or something like that. In the case of, or in the case of major characters, can change the ending itself. Yeah. So there is a dating sim aspect to this game. How did you find that? I found, again, very similarly to, to how I, like, it's, it, at least in this game, it's kind of ripped whole cloth from the Persona games, hmm. in that same sort of situation where you build up a support level, you get various scenes, and uh, you know, hanging out in battle with your with your with your faves gets you gets you stat boosts. Mm. Or you know, like, you could probably argue that Persona probably stole it from Fire Emblem originally. You know, back and forth aside, <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed it. But because this this uh, this Fire Emblem game has the out of battle world that a lot of Fire Emblems don't, you get to spend a lot a bit more kind of uh, intimate time with these characters. Um, in, you know, just kind of in talking to them, in the scenes you get that are all, like, very kind of uh, much grander 3D, uh, like, animated in-engine cutscenes as opposed to just kind of dialogue boxes. Yeah. Uh, and then also, you know, you could just take your faves out to tea. <laughs> yes, I was wondering we get to that aspect because it's like we talk about kind of wandering around the monastery and all that kind of stuff. There's a wealth of activities you can do. You can go to saunas, you can have dinner together. You can take them out to tea and have conversations. You can go sparring. Like, it's an entire you spend, universe you can explore. Like, you know. You can spend a truly offensive amount of time fishing to raise your teacher level. That's true. Yes. And, and that actually brings us to another ingredient as well. You teach classes. What's been yeah, your experience there's a whole, with that? I was like, I, I, I got everything. But I remember going into this, I found that the most daunting because oh, yeah? that, to me, sounds like a, a number crunch. To me, this sounded like just a feel, a real grind of okay. Here's how I have to make my stats better. This is how I level my characters up. That's that's how I kind of saw it when I heard about it first. But the game kind of gives you the option where you can it can just teach for you. Like, if you want to get into it, you know, kind of really micromanage every stat of every character, which some people are into, that's fair enough. Uh, But otherwise, it's like, you know, here's your stats. You can, like, pick your faves and teach them the skills they need. And then just hit auto-go. 
So I found it fine. <laughs> I, I let the game teach itself, essentially. Oh, uh, I couldn't do that. I, I go into individuals and, like, give them all the different things. But as I mentioned the last time you were on the show, that led to the ruining of my entire party, which I didn't realize until the very last level. And it was too late to unteach them the useless things I taught them, having yeah. no dragons and no horses and all this kind of stuff. So there is a harsh learning curve in that aspect. Like, Yeah, there's, you know, sometimes you just got to put on your, your big JRPG brain and just kind of things like, how very do I need this party to be? Yeah. But uh, yeah. I think, like, it just, it, again, this just kind of speaks to the wealth of options this game gives you. Like it as like as in it can you can you know let the game kind of teach itself and just just level up literally you get experience numbers goes up or you can get into the grind and you know micromanage every single stat, um, and the biggie for me that I'm finding was the in combat uh, accessibility issues hmm. because like in I know in previous uh, games there was a kind of a rock paper scissors triangle of What's it? Swords are good on she are good on spears. Spears are good on axes. Axes are good on swords. Was that the it? other way? The other way around, but yeah, yeah. So that that kind of thing. So like you know, there's there's so a lot of uh, previous games. This is what kind of this is one of the things that hung me up on Awakening mm. was you know always trying to think it was like oh but you know my sword guy's just too far away from the spear guy and oh this is the thing they've cut that out pretty much entirely. <laughs> um, just kind of like so just kind of streamline the combat a bit more. Uh, obviously, you know there is the ins- there is the permadeath option where if your character dies in battle, they're gone from the game. You can't level them up anymore. Mm. I went super casual and you know brought my characters back to life. Uh, but the big mechanic that this game introduces that honestly kept me playing was the time reversal mechanic. Yes, Just the this... ability. To... I actually missed this the end for the and the support conversations on my first campaign. Take us through how this works. Uh, th- through various kind of uh, in 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 narrative reasons, you are given the ability to retry, uh, to retry steps in a combat, mm. and it's like you can you can do it for major things. Like if your character dies, you can go back three steps to like you know move them off to a different area. But I just found myself using it because I accidentally moved a character a space I didn't want to. So <laughs> it just it's a, it's a little just reset. Just like oh, there was an oopsie. Let's just bring that back a little bit. And it's that ability to correct minor mistakes that made it so that I could actually play this game. Yeah, but it's it's not. It doesn't make the game like unlosable either. Though you get about twelve charges. Is it? So I think like, even, like it's it's something that you level up because I think at the start of the game you only get like three. Yeah, yeah. And just depending right. on, and I, I can't remember what stat it was tied to. It could be your teacher level. Uh, like, if you don't level something up in a particular way, you only get those three. <laughs> well, I mean, again, it's it just makes Fire Emblem that it's still challenging, but a bit less grueling because the amount of times I've, like, you know, in the classic games, gone through a level to have my favorite character die randomly, like, just through because some enemy pulled a one in a million shot and I have to go back two hours and do it all again. It's a lovely little feature that's very considerate to the player. Like That's it. It's just, it adds options just to make things more accessible. And this is what, this is what I'm going to keep harping on about it being a perfect entry point just to get you familiar with the mechanics. Because here's a twist ending for you. I've actually started playing Awakening again. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I picked it back up there about a week ago, and you know what? I'm I'm at ten levels in now, and thoroughly enjoying it. Excellent. Because having sunk nearly two hundred hours into three houses, I just kind of got a fundamental understanding of the grid based tactic system, mm. and I could just translate a lot of that over. Now, obviously, I'm thoroughly missing the the t- the reversal, the time reversal thing, <laughs> but I'm getting used to that now. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we've got a few minutes left now, so I mean, we I think we've covered more or less most of the aspects of the game, but one aspect I wanted to get into a bit more was character. Who are your kind of favorite characters that you oh, kind of man. miss the most in not playing it now? Oh god, okay. <laughs> uh Claude obviously, he's he's an absolute darling boy. Yeah. And of course I dated him. Naturally, that's, <laughs> well, know. actually, that yes. leads me to my other question. Did you play as a male or a female Byleth? Byleth I, as a protagonist. I, I swapped it up uh, from playthrough to playthrough. I definitely okay. gravitated more towards the girl uh, because 
you know, if anybody's going to be best girl, it's absolutely going to be gaudy too hottie over here. <laughs> um, I know nobody going to tell me different. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like on top of that, like, yeah, no, the boys are, the boys are good. Mm. Uh, but they're not to say there aren't, there aren't absolute top tier uh, wife in this. Hilda is one of my, is probably one of my favorite video game characters. A all just this, just this, you know, meek princess. Oh no, I won't fight anything. But then you actually put an axe in her hand, wipes out armies. <laughs> <laughs> she will bulldoze a whole platoon. <laughs> She's she's a treat, <laughs> um, and and you know, I, I, one thing I, I ended up engaging in a lot was the uh, was was the shipping community. How how deep are you into that idea? I I wasn't aware there was a community. I I mean, don't get me wrong. I have like mathematical plans for whom I want to end up with whom and who I want to be best friends with whom. Just uh, inherited from the other Fire Emblem games. What is the shipping community? Oh, just literally, just like you know, Reddit forums and. Uh, like Tumblr blogs, just dedicated to posting about people's favorite ships. Be- because actually, this is another thing, as I think this is the first Fire Emblem game to include uh, gay relationships in some aspect. Oh, really? So, okay. I, yeah. Uh, so, like, there is a lot of car- There's a lot of uh, new options open that, hey, listen, this can happen. Uh, I'm going personal- to say Dudu and Dimitri are hot contenders then. I, You know, that's one. Uh, I found... Like, I found the weirdest one I found, which seems to be just... And this is just weird to me, because it's mm. so popular from what I've seen online, yeah. is uh, Anna Felix. Okay, Anna as in the redheaded... The, the like... little redhead one. I think I just auto-defaulted her to... Even even in uh, even after the time skip, when she grew up, I was like, no, but you're still a child. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're like 20, but I still see you as a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, my my personal favorite ship is uh, definitely Hilda and Mariam, Marianne. Oh yeah, I can love see them. that. They're they're sweeties. I love them. Um, oh. yeah, it's it's because I mean we get into this, but like it's it's worth restating. There's a roster of like forty odd characters, so we can talk about this kind of off the top of our head. But like, if this is all new to you, it would probably be like if you were introduced to Harry Potter or something like that for the first just time. Given, like you just like you just somebody just shows up with a two hundred printed page wiki at your door and just exactly dumps it on you. yeah 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 yeah. Um, one little one little little fun feature as well that I want to kind of touch on mm. that just I that I that I learned to appreciate after I finished playing the game was uh, the fan just again the fan community for this game is thriving <laughs> my favorite little thing from it is uh vine and tiktok compilations <laughs> oh yeah i have spent hours just lying in bed watching just literally it's it's, it's all kind of the standard vine compilations you'll see yeah. but so people just like superimpose fire emblem the faces of some of the characters and they make it 10 times funnier <laughs> <laughs> And it's, it's just worth... that it's just that good a whole like relatable content. And can I just say actually something we haven't explored? This game, in case we're giving the wrong impression, does have a lovely sense of humor. Every single character oh. has, he has some sort of slight comic quirk to them, you know. Oh yeah, no. Again, like it, as as much as I might have complained about uh, like some of the characters in this game, mm. most of them, the, like the vast majority of them, are very affable. Yes. Even the definitely for sure evil ones. <laughs> oh yeah, like even um, like Hubert, who is like, you know, every Slytherin character merged into a Game of Thrones setting. Like, God! He, he Lo- has likable Lo- tendencies, like... Lorenz, the most disgusting man you'll ever meet, has an arc. And that's, <laughs> and that's one of the most mind-blowing things I've ever experienced in a game. Was, was sitting there 60 hours and being like, oh, god damn it, why do I like you now? <laughs> uh, but like even yeah like e- even there's like there's there's bound to be somebody in this game that you like i think anyone will uh will gravitate towards and that's kind yeah. of the, that's 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 part and parcel with just having such a wide roster yeah that's true and before we because just in case it looks like nintendo's sponsoring us is there anything that you don't like about this game or that you don't agree with or anything like that Nothing, nothing major. I, okay. 
I can't think. Like, there was a few, like, a few battles that, you know, were tedious and just felt RNG to me. Yeah. Uh, but, like, that could have just been my build. Honestly, like, I, uh, there's no major criticisms I can really put on it. That, like, not, none that I can think of now off the top of my head. <laughs> okay, yeah, because, like, certainly I have thoroughly enjoyed this game, like, from beginning to end. And, like, for a game that's, like, 200 odd hours or whatever it really just flows it's been a really lovely experience getting to know each class of characters and it's really bittersweet when you leave the last one and just don't have the time to make connections with your previous class i'm looking forward to going back to it and playing as the first house of characters i had again even though I know it will be the same. You know, you really do kind of get connected to them, you know. There is, yeah. Like, I, I, I remember finishing up my my fourth playthrough for that, for the ending. Mm. And I was kind of thinking to myself, maybe I'll just start it again. Just because, you know, it's been 190 hours ago since I started that first thing. What are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's it, exactly. And, like, it's certainly, I am kind of a collector for, like, all the support conversations. So I'm going to keep going around until I've, got all of that and then distressingly that's... the female character then has a whole bunch so you go over again you know <laughs> that's the other thing actually I don't just I suppose yeah we're running up on the clock now but I don't yeah, know yeah. if you know that this is the uh, almost new game plus abilities yeah because like when you finish your when you finish your first playthrough uh, you unlock the journal and the teacher's diary and you can basically buy back the support levels you had of previous characters Oh yeah, it's um, that's uh, an, uh, that's uh, it's a very user friendly thing. As you're going yeah. along, so it just you means, can, like, it just means of, like you know, yeah. as you finish a house, you jump back into the game. You have a bunch of like stats mm. and stuff from the yeah. previous playthrough, so you're kind of just gonna bulldoze through the first few battles yeah. already. Uh, but then yeah, you just don't. You can you know you can buy back the uh, the support conversations of various characters and essentially just recruit them straight off anyone yeah. you had basically recruited before. And there's more and it to it than that. that. By, yeah, yeah. It just means that like you can kind of end your second playthrough with most of the roster that you've with pretty much all the roster you played through your first playthrough with. Yes, yes, they're immediately available to you, and like there's you can upgrade these statue things, which make your characters level up faster. I only just discovered the crests, which give you these little boosts. So like it makes it. I'm, I I don't want to say quicker. But it avoids the repetition on the goes around, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's user friendly for how dense all the systems are. Yeah. So I think that's a pretty good place to leave off. Is there anything else you want to say about Fire Emblem Three House before you wrap? Or? Uh, no. Uh, like I, as I said, I'll say it again. If you have any interest in the in the franchise as a whole, this is the perfect starting point. <laughs> Yeah, like if, I think, if, if yeah. it's ever caught your attention, start here and see how it is. Yeah, I think that's a that's a really nice place to leave it off. Then, well, then, Kev, thank you very much, and um, hopefully we can have you on the show. Oh, before we go, is there anything would you would like to plug? Oh, well, you know, I got to plug on my crash course every the first Monday of every month on the Nerd to Know Media channel. Uh, the next episode featuring you, Kian. I know. How remember? crazy is that? <laughs> Uh, where the two of us try to unravel Steins Gate. <laughs> and it's <laughs> surprisingly cohesive as an episode goes, i got to say. Yeah, it's trust the time travel episodes take a week and a half to edit. I mean, that's just typical. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be coming out now on the 6th. Uh, and then you can just find me like on the Nerds No Basis radio show every uh, most Wednesdays. Excellent. All right, well... Thank you very much, Kev. You, as you said, you can find him on the Anime Crash Course, which is coming out this Monday, is it? Yes. Let's let's say what? yes. With a, with, with a, yes. With a little asterisk above it. Sometime. Just a little, just a little, little question mark. <laughs> Excellent. Just a little one. <laughs> just, just a little one. All right. This has been the Game Corner. If you have enjoyed this episode, let us know. And if there are any games you want to give a spotlight to, hit us up with a direct message or in the comments. Till then, I've been Kira Kago, this has been Kev, and this has been a multitude of 40-odd Fire Emblem characters. And we will see you next time. Bye! Bye-bye!
Thank you for listening to a Nerd to Know Media production.